All right, well today we're working on the T650. I've got a busted track frame here. This is not uncommon for the track frames to crack and usually you can catch them early enough to where it doesn't rip out the whole uh, bogey or the roller in the center. These are the plates is kind of what was left out after it broke off, of course, it completely fell out of the frame. All the rest of them look pretty good. There's, there's no cracks in the frame and usually what Bobcat says causes this is the bolts that go through the side of the idler actually get loose and that uh, bogey kind of walks in there and, and starts to crack the frame. I've got a little bit of a head start here. I've already got it traced out. I've got lines here where I mark the center hole of what we call this as a mouse hole. And then from the top of this mouse hole to the top of this one, I went ahead and pulled the bolts out so that I could use that as a reference point to run my uh, straight line all the way across so we know where the top of that mouse hole is. So I've got it completely aligned and then I've got my plate marked that I'm going to um, cut out of the frame here and we're going to weld in a new plate and then we're going to put another one on top of that kind of like a stiffener plate. Bobcat actually sells a kit to repair these frames however what I find usually is that the stress cracks uh, the fatigued metal is larger than what they send you so you end up making your own plates anyways. Let's get a little closer look at this and then I'll show you the plates that I cut out and I'll show you how I make the plates. So just a little closer view of what I'm looking at here. I've actually got a crack that extends beyond the plate that I'm gonna cut out. It actually comes up to about this point here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a hole through there and then we're gonna grind this crack out. By drilling a hole in there, we're gonna weld all this up and that hole will keep that crack from extending further up into the frame. So we'll get that part fixed. We're gonna cut out this whole section and weld in a new one. Um, yeah, you can kind of see the back side back here. It actually broke out, like I said, both sides. We're gonna have to do this inside and outside. Now coming around to the other side of the machine, I had to take out a larger section because the stress cracks and the fatigued metal, I wanted to cut out that whole section. And then I've chamfered all the way around here so that we can have full penetration weld. I've got a couple magnets sticking here and that's what I'm gonna put my weld plate to. Again, I've got marks here that tell me where the top of the mouse hole should be and then the center line of the mouse hole right here so we can make sure everything's lined up. The inside of this frame is actually okay. There's really no cracks on it. Um, I might put a stiffener plate on the outside of the inside plate if that makes sense, just to make sure that it doesn't crack in the future. Just because I can't see the cracks doesn't mean that maybe the metal's fatigued since this one was. Now this side did not break out like the other side. It just had a lot of stress cracks in it. So like I said, this morning I kind of got a head start. These are the plates that I've been making. So this is the side that we just looked at. This will be the right side. You can see it's longer. That's about a six inch plate. Again, I've chamfered all the way around the edges so we can make sure we get full pin. I cut these out. Um, this hole right here, ideally, if I had a 13 16 drill bit, I would have drilled the hole, then I used my um, uh, grinder and a cutoff wheel to cut out the slot there. Did that on both these, but what I actually used was a hole saw, a three quarter hole saw. And the hole saw walked a little bit, so um, being the weekend, I couldn't pick up a 13 16 bit, so that actually turned out perfect uh, for the bolt that's gonna go through there. So once we flush weld this into the frame, I'm coming back over the top with this plate here. Now this is quarter inch steel. This is the same thickness that the frame is made out of and this is the same thickness of the plates that Bobcat will send. So this is welding, you know, flush with the track frame. This is going on the top, so it's adding another quarter inch. But Bobcat does not say anything about adding a longer bolt. I guess the stock bolts are fine just by adding that quarter inch so we don't have to replace the bolt. So once we weld everything together, that's what it's gonna look like on the track frame. And again, this is gonna be the left side. You can see this is only a four inch plate, so quite a bit shorter. And then my plate that's gonna go over the top. You can see how the plates are actually, uh, the, the stiffener plates for the outside are wider than the inside plate on both of these. And that way we can weld to the original frame metal. Um, so not only the weld end plate, but the welds will continue on into the, um, uh, the original frame plate. So I'm gonna start with this one right here. 
and see I've already got my magnets back there so I can just put this right into place and into position and we're perfectly flat across here all the way around so we're going to put a few good tack welds and uh, like I said my lines mark the top of the mouse hole and also the center line comes right down through the center of it so we know that plate is perfectly aligned so we're going to go ahead and get this one welded in put this side back together and then we'll go over to the other side and start cutting it out so let's get this one welded in then we'll put the stiffener plate on get it welded in and get it put back together we're going to use the Millermatic 211 to weld these in today uh, this is a dual voltage 110 220 I've actually got it hooked up to the 220 side now and this is flux core welding I'm not using gas um, so I'm outside the wind is blowing uh, whenever I'm outside, I, I like to use flux core uh, whenever I can. Just a much better option. This is what our patch plate looks like weld in, welded in, I guess. I'm going to grind all this down and then we're going to put our outside stiffener plate on. So I kind of just ground out the weld there. Um, now I'm gonna put my outside stiffener plate on. Just kind of using the bolt just to make sure that we do get it perfectly aligned here. Now I'll get a couple tacks on this and then we'll finish welding it up. This is what it should look like kind of when you get finished up um, they they don't recommend welding across the bottom here uh, just around the outside there so 
that's why I make them flush. I'm not worried about welding across the bottom, I guess, for some reason, I don't know. But anyways, yeah, that flux core does a pretty good job welding across there. Okay. Now that I've got the other side done, I'm gonna go ahead and come over here and we're gonna go ahead and cut this plate out. What I'm using to cut the plate out is my hypertherm. Uh, this is my uh, 30 XP air. So this has a built-in air compressor, which is really cool. So, and yeah, I've got plenty of air, but it's so nice to be compact and portable with this plasma cutter to have its own built-in air compressor so we don't have to pull air hoses and stuff out to it. I mean, this thing is really awesome. So I'm just gonna freehand this plate out. Uh, this thing cuts so sharp and so nice. Uh, we can freehand this out and the plate that we've already got cut for it should fit pretty nice. That is like a perfect fit. I'm gonna take the grinder and we're gonna kind of bevel all these edges again, cut this crack out like I was talking about and go ahead and drill a hole and then we'll get this one welded in. So I went ahead and traced my plates out. So now what I'm gonna do is use my hole saw to cut the mouse holes. So once I punch the holes, then we'll come back with our cutting wheel and uh, you know cut the rest of the hole out. But I'm using a three quarter hole saw. And like I said, it walks a little bit. Ideally, this would be a 13 16 hole. But since this hole saw kind of walks just a little bit, it cuts out a perfect hole for these mouse holes. So after we use our grinder, you can see we just got a perfect little mouse hole here. So it works out pretty good. So now that I got both my mouse holes cut, I'm gonna use my plasma cutter and go ahead and cut out our uh, weld plates. Okay, careful, it's hot. Oh, can I use one as well? Here, just use this right here and tap it off. Nice. So after they're cleaned up, you can see those holes line up perfectly in there. Now I just got to chamfer this one and then it's ready to go on the inside.
All right, so we just finished the outside plate. Turned out pretty good. Now I gotta crawl underneath the tractor and do it all from the inside. So that's gonna be a little tougher. But anyways, we'll get that one welded in, we'll get it painted and put back together and we'll take a look at how it turned out when we get finished up. So here's the final product. I'd say it turned out pretty good after a little paint. And that's the left side. I didn't do any of the other ones because there weren't any damage to them, but and of course on the right side again after a little paint turned out pretty good really the hardest part was getting the inside of this one done luckily the inside of the other track frame didn't have any cracks in it so it worked out pretty good but working underneath the machine and grinding welding cutting is <laughs> pretty tough so that was the hardest part other than filming this job the filming was very very difficult so i really appreciate you watching this have any questions on that let me know. Thanks for watching.